The Lord Ooh. has given me a word. And I love what he's doing. If we just listen sometimes, if we listen all the times, we would know what seasons we are in. And there was one word that the Lord kept reminding me of, and it was about the appointed time. God kept saying, the appointed time. The appointed time is a time that has been set for a visitation. We are here right now as an appointed time. We don't do things because we do them. We do them because the Father puts a time, a specific appointed time. Tonight, I'm going to read out of the book of 2 Peter. No, 1 Peter. And I feel like the Lord is calling back holiness. We all know that we've been hearing this lately. Holy, that we are holy people. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 talks about how we are called to be holy. So I'm going to read, starting from verse 1, it says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action. Being the image of God requires us to set our mind for the things of God. It says, we are preparing our minds for action. Being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. These are very, very solid scriptures prepare your mind for action being sober minded in the things of God putting your hope on that grace that brought forth the revelation of Jesus Christ then he goes on to say be obedient children do not be conformed to the passions of your old ways but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges, impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers. And so that scripture just begins to put out a call. Be holy as I am holy. The opposite of holiness is profane. Can you know that a little bit? The opposite of holiness is profane. Profane is a place in our human life that's outside of the place of holiness. Mm -hmm. A lot of people... A lot of people walk around outside of the place of holiness. Amen. They don't even know or recognize that their life is profane. Uh huh. It's empty. It's in a place of emptiness, in a place of destitute, in a place of corruption. When your life is situated outside of the place of where holiness resides, then your life is still being carnal. And what happens is to a believer is that religion's roots spring up when we attempt to separate ourselves from a holy life. Religion will spring up when we attempt to separate ourselves from a holy life. Walking 
around our daily life without the consciousness or awareness of this holiness of God is profanity. First Peter chapter 2 goes on to speak about the living stones of the holy people. Since we put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy, envy and all slander, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up in salvation. What's happening as we are to mature in our belief as mature Christians, when we conduct our lifestyle and live our lifestyle outside of this holiness, we do not grow. A lot of people might say, well, this is, that's obviously common sense. But if it was such common sense, then why isn't holiness so common? If this was so common sense, why is it that we feel that the holiness, the presence of God, the image of God, the very thing that changes people is not present in the lives of the people that are professing that they've seen the revelation of Jesus Christ? Holiness... It's just living, because the word holiness brings people to a place where like, oh, I have to be, you know, holy. To, when you ask, people say holiness is just being a goody two-shoes. No. Holiness is when you are, when you have been sanctified and sanctioned by Jesus Christ himself. Which, if we come back to prior days ago when I preached it all comes back to the intimacy of Christ how we have intimacy with Christ will reveal the very things that are in our hearts for example one of the common things that we're not looking for or asking God for is the holiness of God the holiness of God the aligning divine truth that sits in the providence of God. Verse, where are we? It's long for a spiritual milk. So we're going down to four. No, before three. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be holy priesthood. The Lord is calling for us to position us, ourselves as a holy priesthood. So, Amen. The problem is, because here's the difference. I can't be holy priesthood outside. I can if I come outside with my priest garment, it would be an exterior thing because I know everyone sees my priest garment, so therefore I have to pretend to be holy and priest. But your priesthood is a spiritual thing that no matter whether, whether people see an exterior clothing or not, they should automatically feel that there's a priest inside of you. So that's what it says. Living stones are being built as a spiritual house. My temple is to be a spiritual house for the holiness of God. To offer spiritual sacrifices. Not carnal sacrifices, but spiritual sacrifices. Yes. Amen. That's acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe. Yes. Amen. The honor. Everybody wants to be honored. 
Everyone wants to be honored. But honor is not something that people will automatically do if they don't feel the holiness of God. Because the holiness of God comes with honor, with reverence, the fear of the Lord. All of that comes into play. So when people are around you and they stand there, they sense the holiness of God, which gives them a fear of the Lord that know, with the knowing that you are in Christ. So therefore, I honor you. Without yes. you having to ask to be honored. Yes. Amen. There's something about the holiness of God that we have not captured or refused to capture because of the price. The price to live right. The price to have, what does it say? To prepare my mind for the actions of holiness to have a sober mind set fully on him. Yes, Lord. I can't have my mind fully on him. I got other things I want to do too that are outside of church and my spiritual life. There's a divorce mm -hmm. yes. taking place in the spirit of man. Yes, yes, yes. They want to separate our spiritual Right. As if it's just something right here, and when I need it, I'll come use it. But you can't live in me. The spiritual life was here prior, before my ever my being even being created. I cannot separate my spirit from within me. It is impossible, because when God created man, He put His breath. In men. And when the breath of God came, there's no way to depart the spirit of God in me. So what we tend to do is not have to obey because we don't want to live a lifestyle that's upright with God. It got me thinking because I was speaking to Arabella the last time we were talking. It was she said, "What if all of this is just about obedience?" Well, it's disobedient to not live according to the Word of God already. So living in this earth realm as if we are just earthly beings instead of heavenly beings. When we begin to set our mind on just earthly ways, we start to divorce the spirit within us. So there's a war. You grieve the spirit, and we all know the process of what happens when you, you are disobedient. So honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders reject has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. That's, My God. Yes. That's right there. That's right. It says for those, it, it's funny, he said the honor comes for those who believe. But those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of a stumbling and a rock of offense. My that's God. what happens to those who do, who reject the stone, the cornerstone, the primary, Jesus Christ. My, my. They stumble because they disobey the word. And as they were destined to do. But, but, you are a chosen race. Here's the word. A royal priesthood. Hallelujah. A holy nation. A people for his own possession. That you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Hallelujah. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received the mercy, but now you have received the mercy of God. Amen. He is stating that we are in a chosen race. Mm. We are not people of, this, of the world. Right. We are people that comes from a heavenly place down to earth to take dominion, to take back what the darkness has taken Amen. from yes. our people. Yes, Lord. 
to reinstate the heart of God to man. Yes. But I believe that this word is for internal. It's for the believer. Because the holiness of God says it's for those who believe. Mm -hmm. But you choose, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. The holy nation that the Lord refers to is not a nation. He said everyone we speak into is a nation. Mm, yes. You know, we don't never know. We don't never know. So conducting ourselves as a royal priesthood and speaking into the nations, the holiness of God will reestablish itself again. There is something about the holiness of God that when people come in, Jesus. flesh cannot contain. Yes, My that's God. right. Amen. When people, I, it's been, yes. God, I said, God, Lord, remind me the last time I've walked somewhere and my body trembled from your presence. You know that I don't have to go anywhere. I can literally be in my secret place and feel the holiness of God and just tremble in that very nature. And when I come out of this place, I take that nature with me. God is calling for a holy people. We are going to pray in the next 40 days for the holiness of God and the fear of the Lord to hit the land, to hit America. Because we need it. We need a great awakening, but not just a movement, but an individual movement of an awakening. Because we can do so much more with, with the body than we can do by ourselves. That's right. We don't do things with God just because we want to do it. That's, That's right. right. Amen. We do things for God because we want to be obedient. That's right. Obedience. And it's, it, it, yeah, obedience is better than sacrifice, right? Yes. Okay. Amen. It does require sacrifice. It requires you sacrificing your fleshly, carnal nature. Yes. It requires you intentionally positioning yourselves into not just hearing the word, but being a doer of it. Uh-huh. And I know that in the next month God is going to show up I read a scripture today that talked about the constant tent meetings and how constant God was showing up this might be our norm my God Jesus. this might be our norm what if this is all we're appointed to do but the word says that when God appoints you there's a visitation it's just a matter of time when you are in your appointed position it's just a matter of time. And you know, the word appointed goes in to tell you that you are an appointed person set apart for a particular service to the Lord. See, I appoint you and set you apart to do everything. You, I appointed and set you apart for a particular job. That's going to require my holiness. It's going to require my righteousness. It's going to require my image. The only way to combat and actually win is through submission. Submission, being submitted. Amen. Submission breaks rebellion. Yeah, yes it does. If you submit more than you rebel, right. you will be in victory. The Lord revealed that a while back because everyone has to deal with their rebellion. And when we were going through the process of rebellion, the Lord said, you want to win this battle or do you want to continue to rebel? And I know rebellion is not of the Lord. So I said, Lord, I don't, I do not want to be rebellious. 
but I don't know how to break it. Yes. And the Lord says, begin to submit. Submit your time. Mm -hmm. Submit your time. Whatever it looks like. Work like you're working for me in everything you do. Whether you want to do it or not, get your heart set on that mentality. Don't look at what's the outcome. What am I? Is there a reward? Is what? What? No. He said, submit to what I tell you to. Don't question it and have the heart to do it. Mm. My yes, God. Because the, the, the last thing we need is people doing things without the heart of the Lord. That's right. No one wants to be even around that anyway. Even at work, you know, when you're in the world working and you have people that are just there because they're getting paid. My you can God. sense that. And so, therefore, no one really wants to be on the team. And we're all there in this funk. And then they wonder why the companies don't prosper. Because where there's division, there's destruction. So, and that goes back to Man dividing themselves within themselves brings destruction. Yes. The Lord is calling. My God. Mm. For some people that are walking the royal priesthood. Yes, Lord. We don't have to wear our priest garments. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Your priest garments are, are found in the spirit. Yes. yes and when you find your priestly garment in the spirit... Your body aligns to that position. And you walk in your priesthood anointing. The Lord is looking for someone to come to the altar and receive the priestly garment. It doesn't have to be this altar. It could be the altar that you have before the Lord in your secret place. But whatever your altar may be where you meet the Lord. There's no point in time waiting for a spiritual impartation. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't go into all the teaching tonight of what a priesthood would look like and get into a whole discipleship training. <laughs> but if you were researching yourself and begin to dig into it, you're gonna encounter something that your heart has been longing for. You just didn't know what it was. And it was that moment, that desire for what? To change not only my my character, my attitude, but my mind, the way I see things. It will reposition you on the things above and not below. Because we're to call to pull heaven down to earth. Heaven down to earth. We're the, we're the between gap for the people. When you take this position. I said, Lord, I'm just going to pray. Yes. Yes, amen. Because that's all the Lord's given me. Because Jeez. it's a seed. Go. We have to be very wise on where we plant our seeds. Amen. Yes, Lord. But we have to be very wise where we plant our seeds. Those who have ears to hear will hear it. And those who don't, we pray for. So, Lord, we just thank you, God, mm -hmm. that you are calling forth the holiness of you in your people. We thank you, God, for the priesthood anointing. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you're bringing, you're bringing your people into that. You're bringing your children into that to walk in yes. that. See, because what you don't understand is that the priesthood anointing saves the sick. Mm, yes, it does. The shadow is what heals them. Amen. You won't need to do an impartation because what you're carrying is the presence, the very essence of God Jesus. with you. Yes, Lord. But the only thing that stands in our way is our carnality. Hmm. So, Lord, tonight, Lord, that you would come in. Like a rushing wind on your people. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. That you would awaken them to this call. Yes, Jesus. That you would touch their hearts, God. That you would ask a simple question. Who will you serve? Shake their inner being. 
shake their inner being to align God to the desire to solely just be sold out for you without a shadow of a doubt that they would be sold out. Not concerned about the things of this world and aligning ourselves completely with you. So Lord, I just thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, because it's happening. I'm going to declare that it's happening. I didn't just get the message. God deposited the message. If you deposit in me, you deposit in many. So many hear it, but many don't speak it. Because it's not a common topic in the church. Lord, make this so common in your people. Make it a hunger to know what that looks like. Make it a hunger for them to want to change. Completely be transformed, God, by your image. Lord, correct their hearts about it. Because some of their perspectives are not even correct. And so therefore they cannot even embrace. Lord, touch their hearts. So we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.